Hello and welcome to In Your Face. I'm Thomas Mercurio along with Hayden Matthews and Tyler Kading. Today we will be discussing three different sports and we'll start with football and the Bears. How do you, how do you guys, um, Hayden, how do you think uh, Mitch Trubisky will fare in the league and how long will it take him to contribute for the Bears? Okay, so I think Mitch Trubisky is a tremendous pick at two. And I believe if you look at his skill set, He's a bigger dude, and he's pretty mobile for a quarterback. And the way I look at him, he's kind of like a Jameis Winston because he's got good arm strength. Even though he hasn't, he isn't as proven as Winston was from coming out of FSU. He's he's got decent mobility. He's got pretty good accuracy, and his football IQ may not be at the tip top. But learning under John Fox uh, and Dowell Loggins, I'm pretty sure he can make that improve. And if you just look at the skill set, he's kind of got a really good overall game, which is exactly what you're looking for in a quarterback now. And Tyler, I think you have different yeah, I li- ideas on that. Oh, yeah. I like the, I like the Winston cop, but I don't think he's anywhere as a, as a player um, similarity. I don't think he's anywhere near as good as Winston. This guy is a, as a quarterback. One of the worst things you can do that affects your accuracy, especially deep, is throwing with a lock back knee. And that's Trubisky's main. That's Trubisky's yeah. main thing, and it's going to yeah. cause a lot of accuracy accuracy concerns in college. He could have gotten away with the ball going a little bit off track. When his receivers get away, because the def- defensive backs weren't as good. Yeah, I faced a couple in the ACC, Clemson being one that had, I think two or three defensive backs drafted, but realistically didn't. That wasn't as big of a concern. Now, when you go to the NFL and you're facing the best defensive backs in the game, this is going to happen. Yeah. Plus, you mentioned his football IQ. This guy didn't know what a hard snap was until John Gruden showed him on TV. And I don't like that. Out of, I don't like that out of a quarterback. Yes, he's mobile, and yes, he'd be able to extend plays. I don't think he's. I don't. I don't think he'll be a good NFL quarterback. He'll have decent accuracy. He'll have decent accuracy. I don't think he has the arm strength that's needed. But I do not think he's a good NFL quarterback. He's a bust out of the league really fast. Plus, he's gonna want because he's gonna want the money. He's still holding yeah. out, trying yeah. to get as much money as he can on his rookie deal. Mm-hmm. He's gonna want the money after not deserving yeah. it. He's gonna bust out of the league. Yeah, I mean, I agree with some of the stuff you said, like the back knee lock. But you have to figure under um, Dow Loggins and John Fox, you know that they're gonna talk to him about that. And if you look at m- what the majority of what he did was from the shotgun, and if a comparison that a couple years ago with Marcus Marietta. He only took shotgun snaps out of Oregon. And, and look at the success he's having where I think that the stuff that he's having um, isn't like arm motion. He's got fine arm motion. He's got decent accuracy. It's little um, body stuff. It's not any mental stuff, which is the stuff that you can fix. I'm not going to say it's easy, but with uh, Mike Lennon, I think he's got a full year to learn under Mike Lennon, learn the system, and improve on that, which will make him a quality quarterback. But do you truly trust John Fox and Dow Loggins to fix it, though? Because what is who is John? What rookie quarterback yeah. is John? As John Fox um, mentioned, his I, the I, only I, one's Tim Tebow. I, and I don't say, yeah. I don't. Dow Loggins uh, has completely unproven and was really bad last year as an offensive coordinator. Yeah, I'm not. Who the Packers game in particular by his terrible play calling. Yeah, I'm not saying that I trust them. I'm just saying he has a full year to learn and try to correct his mistakes. Well, yeah, okay. he, well, he does, he does, but do you trust Mike Lennon to teach him that, though? Mike Lennon's the same guy that, bench, that um, didn't get the start over Jameis Winston when Jameis Winston it, was coming out raw. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, um, thanks for your thoughts on that topic. We'll see you in a few years on this. And then uh, our next question, we'll move to hockey. <laughs> Who do you guys think the best player on the Blackhawks is? Patrick Kane or Jonathan Tays? Uh, we'll start with Tyler. I mean, it's Kane. Um, uh, I'm talking about on ice, completely on ice, is Patrick Kane. Um, Jonathan Taves is two-way. He's great, but he's not a skillful offensive. He's not a skillful offensive player. You rely a lot on Brandon Saad. He hasn't been anywhere near the same player since Saad left. He's going to have a good year this year. Brandon Saad was what made Jonathan Taves into the top 10 NHL player that he was and the top 10 offensive, productive player that he was. He can play back. He's not a winger. He's not a winger. He, doesn't, he needs to play that defensive way. Kane doesn't need to. He's able to excel on the offensive, offensive end of the ice. Who cares, all right? If you look at the Chicago Blackhawks and you look at the Stanley Cups they have won and you look at who's been their leader, all right, you've got Duncan Keith, Corey Crawford, and Jonathan Tate. Those are the three best I'm guys. I'm on ice. I'm not arguing leader. Jonathan on the ice. is the better leader. I'll give you that the, right here. Yes, all right. Uh, if you look at it on the ice, Patrick Kane, if you look what he was able to do in Nashville, nothing because he was all offense. Jonathan Tate was Jonathan so Tate score in Nashville? Who he, was cares dread, that, he was dreadful Who cares the that he didn't score? It wasn't even, Jonathan, Taves, Jonathan Davis looked like a below-average NHL center against no. the Predators. All right. 
the whole team looked like a below oh, average yeah, team. But, but if you look at it, Jonathan Taves actually, is n either number one or number two in the league right now. Him or Sidney Crosby, you can argue both as the best player in the NHL. No. And there, no. and I don't have a doubt in my no. mind because of Jonathan to, Taves. Connor, Connor McDavid just fall off the face of the earth or something. Con like Connor that? McDavid. Is, oh, yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> Connor McDavid's right there with them. I forgot about. Yeah, he's right there. It's Taves, McDavid. And Crosby. And if you look at it, Jonathan Taves is arguably the best two-way player in the game. Because if you ask him to score 30 goals a season, he can score 30 goals a season. But the, what Joe Quenville and the Blackhawks organization is asking Jonathan Taves to do is be their best defensive player and be one of their top offensive players. And that's what he's doing so year saying, in and year out. So if you're saying he could score at will when they turn, when they ramped up the offensive pressure and had their two-way two -way guys focusing more against offense against Nashville, which is what you needed to do against Nashville because that's the, their style of play, he... He didn't do anything. He looked completely lost when he was trying to focus on offense and not playing that two-way game. So did the whole team. As the Taves, Taves came. Taves more than anyone. The other guys at least looked like they knew what they were doing. Taves, when he, when he went into the attack against Subban, um, Subban, Yossi, Yarn Crook, the other guys, he didn't look like he knew what he was doing when he was trying to focus especially on offense. He's a great defender. He's like, I'll give you that. He's an amazing right. defender. So here's he's what, not an offensive here, here's, what I, here's what I want to ask you, right? You've got, you're, you're winning by one. And the opposing team's on a, is on the penalty kill or is on the power play. Who are you sending out there? Jonathan Taves, correct? He's a better defender. Yeah. Exactly. He's a better defender. Now, you're, now you're on the power play. Who are you gonna or John, on the power penalty kill? You're sending out Jonathan Taves over Patrick Kane. Absolutely. Now on the power play, I agree. You want to send Kane Patrick Kane. And by a mile. Yes. But who else is gonna be on that line with them? Well, Anisimov, especially because they were. Anisimov, did, Anisimov can't win draws. That's the thing. Anisimov struggles at the at the faceoff. Dot. Jonathan Taves wins. He, he's always the top, in the top of the league in faceoffs. He always is out there on the power play, the penalty kill. You ask him to do something, he does it, and he does it top, which is why he's one of the top three players okay, in the, okay. in the NHL, guys. and there's no doubt uh, about we, it. We need a lot of time to talk about our last topic, as we have some breaking news here. Jose Quintana has been traded to the Cubs from the White Sox, a crosstown deal for number eight prospect Eloy Jimenez, as well as Dylan Cease. What do you guys think about that? I like it on both sides. I really do. Um, Eloy Jimenez is a beast. He, there's no doubt about that. You saw the video of him breaking the lights and stuff like that. He can swing. He's the top three hitters in the, in the league, according to everyone that's watched that. All the scouts say it's Vladimir Guerrero's son, which is a great thing. Dante Bichette's son, which is a great thing to have, and then Eloy Jimenez. The, the, he's a beast. Yeah. Dylan Cease is a great pitcher, but then again, Jose Quintana is a top 15 starting pitcher in the game. Oh, yeah. There's no doubt about that. I'd argue he's top 10, plus he's under a really good contract of three years control. And that's what the Cubs need because they're already into the luxury tax situation. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a great deal on both sides. I think the White Sox are now maybe moving back a year because Eloy Jimenez is only an A ball and they're not going to be competitive maybe instead of being 20. 21, maybe 2022, but then again, I think they're going to be better in 2022 than yeah. they would have been in 2021. Oh, yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, if you look at the deal from the Cubs side, they gave up two top prospects and just, and two other kind of let-off prospects that just kind of had to happen for the deal to come yeah. through, but then they also acquire such a tremendous guy in Jose Quintana who will come in. Hopefully he can turn it around just like how we hope that the whole Cubs team can turn around, and now all of a sudden, if you get Jose Quintana pitching on his average, uh, John Lester on his average, Arietta on his average. You get Kyle Hendricks back and healthy, who was probably the Cubs' best pitcher, and then all of a sudden you get you know Lackey and Anderson, and all then your and you your team looks really really good if the bats can start to click. I mean all of a sudden you're starting to think deadly, and then you can't forget about the um, how the Cubs may still have an offer for Kyle Fulmer on the. Oh, no, Michael block. Fulmer. Michael I mean, Fulmer. Yeah, it, sorry. There's a chance. I think it's done now because I don't think they're going to acquire a fifth starting pitcher. They have Mike, Mike Montgomery's fine for a fifth starter. He doesn't go deep into games, but he's been pitching really well of late. Yeah, um, he, you, he, have Lack, you have Lackey who, for a fifth starter, everyone says, oh, he's going to be a fourth starter. He's terrible. Yes, he fifth starter, serviceable. Yeah. Not great, but serviceable. Brett Anderson's still hurt. He'll come back. Yeah. You have um, Eddie Butler as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no need for a, there's no need for a fifth starting pitcher. I think this now maybe moves the clock for, forward a little bit and them trying to get a bat and compete this year. But you see how well Basio's worked with the pitchers. Yeah. Um, how much he changed Arietta's game, how much he changed Hendricks' game when they came here. Yeah. Uh, I, Quintana's already a four point was he four point eight ERA this year, and that's his yeah. bad year. Yeah. Just yeah. imagine what he can do when he gets on his form and with a great pitching coach. Yeah, I have no doubt about it. Uh, but I mean, with the way that the Cubs have been pitching and Quintana hasn't had his great best year. Um, I would like to see one of the position players. I don't care who it is, whether it's Schwarber, Baez, Russell, um, 
Alberta more. It, it doesn't really matter to me, but I think we need to get, as you said, a big bat that isn't like Kyle Schwarber, who's really struggling this year, or a starting pitcher who's really struggling this year. All right, thank you, guys. Uh, this is In Your Face uh, with Thomas Mercurio along with Hayden Matthews and Tyler Caden. Good night.